Good day, students. So welcome to part two of the Algebra 2 Trig Regents Review for January 2014. In this installment, we are going to be going over problems 6 to 10. In problem 6, uh, it says the cafeteria has five different lunch periods. The cafeteria staff wants to find out which items on the menu are most important. So they give every student in the first lunch period a list of questions to answer in order to collect data to represent the school. Which uh, type of study does this represent? So this is a question on um, statistical studies. Okay, So if we want to group them, we can group them into three categories. These two are surveys, we have observation, and then we also have experiments. Now uh, what is the difference? Um, Observation involves um, observing um, data as is, okay? You're observing um, what you're studying just the way it is. You're not, you're not altering it in um, any, any way, shape, or form, fashion, okay? So observation involves um, it, um, inspecting the population study as it is. Controlled experiment involves the opposite of that. In, in an experiment, you actually manipul you manipulate uh, you manipulate the um, elements of your study, your sample uh, population. You actually interact and make changes and then uh, document how those uh, manipulations affected um, your, your, your outcome. In population study, this one involves collecting information. Okay? You collect um, information from a sample population or a population, okay? So that's, that's the difference between um, the three. Okay, now, um, which of them are, is applicable to this situation right here? If you read the problem, you notice that um, um, it says, every student, every student in the first lunch period were given a list of questions to answer. So if you're um, giving students a list of questions to answer, what are you doing? You're collecting, uh, you're collecting data, okay? So that qualifies as a survey. So the question is, is this a population survey or a sample survey? Now we are looking at only, it was only the um, first lunch uh, period students that were surveyed, okay? But they wanted to get um, an idea as to how the, what the, where the whole school stood, the entire school, okay? So we're using just the first period to represent the entire school. That is an example of a sample survey, okay? Population survey involves surveying the entire population, but we're not um, questioning the entire school population in this study. We are just, um, we're just focusing on the first lunch period to get an idea as to which menu item is most popular. So since we're doing just a, a bunch, just a, a fraction of the entire population to, uh, you know, extrapolating to the entire population, this is an example of a sample survey, okay? So remember, survey has to do with collecting information, experiment is manipulating your um, population, observation is inspecting it as it is, and then the difference between these two is sample involves just using a small fraction of randomly selected um, elements from the entire set, whereas population involves um, serving the entire population. Okay, so that's that's the difference. All right, let's take a look at uh, question number seven. Question seven says, which uh, relation is both one to one and on two? Okay, so one to one basically means that for every element you have in your output, you have exactly one input pointing to that. Okay, so you might wonder which is in, which is out. Well, the set on the right is my output, and the set on the right is my in. Okay, it's just like a function. Um, the in represents your independent variable, and your output represents your dependent variable. So in order for it to be a one-to-one, -one, every um, input must point to exactly um, one output. Okay, you can have one input pointing to, to two outputs. That's, that's not a one-to-one -one function. 
All right. Um, all right, so let's take a look at all these and see which one um, is one-to-one. -one. All right, so what you're looking for for a violation of one-to-one -one is you're looking for an in going to two outs, all right? In going to two outs or uh, two ins going to exactly one out, okay? So if you have a split arrow or a converging set of arrows, um, then you have a uh, a violation of, of um, the one-to-oneness of a relation. So let's look at this situation. This goes just to that, that's good. But if you look here, our H and M both go to one output. So this is not one-to-one. -one. You have two to one here. So this is not a one-to-one -one function, okay? We're looking at this scenario where you have a convergence of um, outputs, I mean, two inputs converging to one output. So that's, that's not good. All right, uh, option two. Let's see, we have one to one, good, one to one, good, one to one, one to one. So this looks good. Remember, we're just looking at one to oneness. We're not talking about onto yet. We'll go back to that in a minute. If you look at uh, option three, we have a violation here because you have R going to two distinct outputs. That's not one to one. Okay, that's one to two. And here you have H and M going to two, that's two to one. That's bad. You have two violations here of these two cases. So this is not a one-to-one -one function. Now the last one, R goes just to one output good, H to one output good, M to one output good, S to one output good. Excellent. So these two functions are one-to-one. -one. Okay, so this is one-to-one, one-to-one. -one. And this one also is one-to-one. -one. Okay, so the question says which is one to one and on two. So which of this is not on two? On two basically means that for every element you have an output, you have exactly one input pointing to that element. Okay, so you look at all the output elements here, four, two, one, five. Do you have exactly one input pointing to them? Four has R going to it, that's good. Two has M going to it. One has S going to it, five has H going to it. So every um, image has a pre-image, so to speak, okay? You do not have any um, output element in isolation without any arrow pointing to it. So this relation right here is on two. It is one to one and it's on two. So this is our correct answer. Let's look at option four. Is this a, an onto function, even though it's one to one? Is this on two? Do we have any element in the output that does not have um, an input pointing to it? 4 has R, 8 has H, 2 has M, 5 has S, 1 has nothing pointing to it. So this function is not on 2, okay? Because this has no um, input pointing to it. So that shows us that the answer is option number 2. All right, so let's take a look at number 8. For number 8, the problem says, Max solves a quadratic equation by completing the square. He shows the correct step. What are the solutions to his equation? So he has been solving uh, the quadratic equation by completing the square. He successfully completed the square and uh, factored it into um, a square of a binomial, which is good. So to finish this off, we just simply have to get rid of this square and these two isolating x and that will be the solution of our quadratic equation. So first thing we're going to do is get rid of the two, the squared. So we're going to root the two sides of our equation, the left and the right side. And on the left side, the square and the square roots are inverse operations. They cancel out. So we'll have x plus 2 equals, hmm, let's see. Anytime you take the square root of negative, you have an i. The square root comes out as an i. And the square root of 9 is 3, so you have 3i. Remember, the square root of negative 1, or the square root of negative, is equal to i. Okay? So square root of negative 1 is i. That's how it came about. Okay, now we have that. Um, okay, yeah, let's not forget the absolute value. Because when you take the square root of a square, you have an absolute value. So, uh, as that, moving along, we're going to get rid of that absolute value quantity first before we can uh, solve the equation. So how do we do that? We can rewrite it as plus or minus 
x plus 2 equals 3i. So you can divide both sides by plus or minus 1. Plus or minus 1. Divide both sides by plus or minus 1. And that gives you uh, x plus 2 equals plus or minus 3i. Okay, and then to finish this up, we just simply subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. And then we're going to have x equals negative 2 plus or minus 3i. Negative 2 plus or minus 3i is the solution uh, to our quadratic equation. So our answer is option number 2. All right, let's take a look at uh, question number nine. Question number nine, see, it says, which expression represents the total number of different 11 letter arrangements that can be made using the letters in the word mathematics? So I like to call these alpha perms or alphabetical, alphabetical permutations, okay? When you think about arrangements, you're thinking about permutations. What are the different ways that these letters can be arranged here? So whenever you're um, dealing with the permutation of letters um, in a word, what you want to do is you want to think about the formula for alphabetical permutation. So uh, the formula is as follows. If you have um, if you have m words, I mean m letters in a word. Let's write this again. You have m letters, <laughs> m letters. Or an M letter word, um, and then you have R, S, and T repetitions, repeats. Uh, the number of arrangements is basically going to be arrangements is going to be M factorial divided by the repetitions, which is R factorial times S factorial times T factorial. Okay, so that's basically the formula. Ideally, you have every, you have the um, arrangements of the total number of letters divided by the permutation, the factorial of each and every letter. But remember that one factorial is equal to one. So if a letter does not repeat, it does not affect the um, possible number of arrangements. So that's why we just focus our attention on the one that counts, which is the letters that repeat themselves. Okay, so the only two things you're focusing on for mathematics is the total number of letters, which is M, and the total number of letters that repeat, or how many times any letter that repeats itself is repeated. Okay, so let's go ahead and write this down. We have math, let me make sure I spell this correctly, math T. We have T-H, um, let me T-H-E. M A uh, T I C S. Okay, T I C S. Mathematics. All right. So let's see. Uh, how many letters do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You can look at the option. All the options you have here it clearly shows you that eleven uh, is the total number of letters you have. So the arrangements are going to be total number of letters eleven factorial divided by the ones that repeat themselves. Okay, how many M's are there? One, two, so we have a repetition there. We have two M's. Okay, how about A's? One, two, we have two A's. How about T's? One, two, we have two T's. How about H? One, that's it. How about E's? One, that's it. How about I? One, that's it. C? One that's it, S, one that's it. So these are the only ones that repeat themselves. We have two M's, two A's, two T's. So we're gonna include in the denominator the repetitions factorial. So two factorial for the M's, two factorial for the A's, and two factorial for the T's. Okay? So remember you multiply them, don't add them like it's done here, that's wrong. The correct answer to question number nine is option number four, okay? All right, let's take a look at uh, problem number 10, the last um, example I'll do in this installment. So it says, if 5,000 is invested at a rate of 3% interest compounded quarterly, 
What is the value of the investment in five years? Use the formula A is equal to P times one plus R by N raised to the NT, where A is the amount accrued, P is the principal, R is the rate, um, is the interest rate, N is the number of times per year the money is compounded, T is the length of time in years. So three things you want to keep in mind here. First of all, the meaning of the uh, compounded period. This is compounded quarterly. You have to really be careful to make sure you understand what that means. Second thing you want to watch out for is expressing percent in mathematical form. This is a verbal form. It has to be converted. Okay. And the last thing is you have to be able to enter this expression correctly in your calculator or else you get a, a wrong answer. So let's go ahead and um, write down the formula again. We have the uh, final amount is equal to principal times one plus the rate divided by number of times compounded in a year, time number of times compounded in a year, times the time period of the investment. All right, so this is an equation, one equation with one unknown, namely A. So let's list everything that we need. P is $5,000. The rate R, R is 5% in, I'm sorry, it's not 5%, R is 3%. P is five years, so R is 3%. So this is another place I wanted us to pay close attention to. You do not put three in this formula, that's wrong. You convert this into decimal form. 3% percent, you can think of three as three percent is per 100. Put a decimal point here and a decimal point there. If you want to make this over one, the denominator one, you must move your decimal point forward twice. So the same goes with the top one, two. Okay, and I insert that zero. So 3% is point zero three okay so that's what you input in in your calculator and the number of times compounded per year is uh, quarterly so what does a quarter mean how many quarters in a dollar you have four quarters in a dollar right so quarterly is breaking a year into four quarters so n is four t is how long you invest in your money and it's for five years so t is equal to five okay now we just put in oh one last thing is a what is the value of A? A is unknown. That's what we're looking for. So let's put everything in our, our formula. So A is equal to 5,000 times 1 plus, um, uh, let's see, 0 0.03 over N, which is 4, times N again, 4 times the time, which is uh, 5. Okay, now having set it up like this, that's good. The next hurdle to cross is entering it correctly in your calculator. I'm going to be making use of a TI-89 titanium calculator, but the same syntax applies to other calculators also. So let's see what we can do here. We have 5,000 times 1 plus um, 0 0.03 divided by four, close the parentheses, raised to the now since we have two numbers here, we can just multiply them together. Four times five is 20, just to keep it easy. So four times five is 20, and the answer is $5,805.92. Okay, so your answer is number three. Okay, so let's make sure that's what I had. Again, uh, five, eight, yes, that's good. All right, so thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to our channels for um, updates to the next um, installments of this review series so you can be ready for your um, exams. Uh, and do post the comments to let us know what you think about this presentation. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like it and feel free to share it with your friends. More clips can be found on mathgoodsev.com slash test prep just to come to the New York region and you have access to the collection of previous year's um, exams that we worked out. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.